Today I'm going to show you how to hack one pattern into two different looks. Let's get to it. So I have been making a whole lot of Thoughtful Creativities little A-line dress that she designed for Project Dress a Girl. And I thought that this would be a good time to show you some different ways that you can actually change this dress up using just one hack. It's just gonna be one pattern hack, but you're going to be making it in two different ways. So the first little dress that I wanna show you is actually inspired by this dress right here, which was made by Laces and Tool over on Instagram. And when she posted this picture, immediately I knew that I was going to show you guys how to make something similar. Now she played with the direction of her stripes. I didn't have stripe fabric, but I'm gonna show you how to get a similar look to that by adding bias tape into your actual pattern. The second hack that I'm gonna show you is how to make something like this, where it's got a much longer ruffle up at the top and then the shorter bodice. So let's just get right into it. I'm actually lining up my pattern pieces here so that way they fall on the same line. I want the bottom of this arm side to match up to the other side as well. And the reason why I want these to actually fall on the same line is because I want to be able to use my big old ruler once and just make one line. So I'm measuring from that arm side, the bottom of the arm side down two and a half inches and I'm drawing a line straight across. Now this is going to be our cut line. Go ahead and grab your scissors and get to snipping. Try not to mix up these pieces. Try to just keep them together. You wanna keep the tops with the appropriate bottoms together, um, just so that you're not mixing and matching. I like to pin the pieces together that I'm not using, so that way it just kinda of keeps them together, or I'll just group them together and really move them right out of my way. Now grab your fabric. I actually have a half yard of this quilting cotton that I'm gonna to try to squeeze this dress out of. Now, I also do have some bias tape that I'm going to use, so I'll try to fill in with that as much as possible. But I'm going to take this pattern piece here and I'm gonna line it at the top. Now, remember where we cut that line, we have to add in some seam allowance. So I'm going to make sure that when I actually do cut the bottom of this top bodice and then the top of that skirt, I'm gonna make sure that there's a quarter inch seam allowance on both of those pieces. So that way, when I sew them back together, it's not coming up short. And I'm gonna make sure to do that to both sides. So here I'm working on the back piece and I'm going to pin it, leaving that half inch gap in the middle so that way I can cut it in half and I'll have both of my quarter inch seam allowances. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut this out pretty carefully because I really do want to try to preserve as much of this fabric as possible for pockets and the ruffle. And then I'm going to cut right down the middle of this. But because I'm nervous, I'm going to grab this fancy big old ruler and get a straight line. And here you can see fancy straight line. Okay, I'm gonna finish cutting out the rest of this bodice and then we're gonna move on to the other side. Okay, so now we have our two front pieces. I'm gonna set those aside and I'm gonna cut the rest of my pieces out. So here I'm just gonna take my ruler again and I'm trying to get some straight edges so that way I can cut my ruffles. So I'm just gonna, oop, that's a little bit, and let's put it back. I'm just gonna cut straight down this side, and then I'm gonna do the same on the other side so that I'm working with a pretty decent looking rectangle. This square is actually 10 inches wide, so I'm going to cut the height of each of my rows to about three and a third inches because I do want three different strips from this rectangle.
Okay, and so now we have all of our strips. We can put this aside. We're gonna start with our front bodice piece. So go ahead and grab that piece and you're going to want to open it up so that you can see the entire front. This is where we're going to start to add the bias tape and just kind of start layering everything. So get that piece nice and flat. Grab your bias tape. Now you're going to want to put your open side of your bias tape towards the actual um, seam that we're going to be sewing. So you want the open edge along this bottom and I'm just gonna quickly pin this in place. Now that it's pinned, I'm going to grab my rotary cutter and just cut off some of this excess. Now grab that bottom skirt piece and we're going to line it up with all of this. So go ahead and take that edge. And we're going to flip our skirt up and we're gonna match up these edges. So now we've got a sandwich, right? We've got the bodice, the bias tape, and then the skirt. And I am just going to remove each of these pins that I have in the bias tape, and I'm going to reset them. So that way it's going through each layer of my new fabric sandwich. So this is what it looks like when it's all stitched up. You can see the bias tape poking through. And on the other side, you can see that I've already finished my seam. So I've gone ahead and I've surged that and I've pressed it up. Now we're going to have to do the same thing with the back. Now we have our front and our back pieces constructed. We're just gonna go ahead and follow the rest of Thoughtful Creativity's instructions to put this dress together. And when it's done, this is what it's going to look like. Now I went ahead and I attached this tiny little bodice pocket that has this cute little detail up on the top. Jen over at Today and Jen's Sewing Room is going to show you how to make a beautiful lined pocket like that. So there you see the front and the back. That's all that's to it. Now let's move on to the fun ruffle dress, but before we do, let's take a look at all of the different options that we have. So we have the border print and we have the quilting cotton. And you see the lovely little heart pocket there. And then we have the dress that we just did with the bias tape. So these are just a couple of options. Let me show you the ruffle dress. Now we're gonna go ahead and move on to the other one with a big old ruffle. So grab your pieces, again, your pattern pieces we're really going to need the top pieces of the bodice. So go ahead and grab those two pieces and get rid of the bottoms. We no longer need those. Now for the bottom ruffle, I need two pieces that are going to run the length of this border, which is 36 inches, but I'm also going to need it to be 15 inches wide. So I'm measuring out 15 inches and I'm cutting straight across. And that's going to be one part of my ruffle bottom. And I need the other side too because we have a front and a back. So I'm gonna measure it out here and cut that. Okay, so I wanted to make just a really quick note about the actual ruffles on these dresses because I have two very different fabrics here and they're behaving differently. I actually cut these ruffles to different lengths. So for this ruffle, I actually cut the width of my fabric times two. So the width of my cotton was 44 inches wide, which means that I ended up with a ruffled piece that was 88 inches long total. And then I gathered it into here. And since it's quilting cotton, you can see how that kind of lays nicely at the actual bodice, where it meets a bodice. This one, in comparison, was an Ankara. So this fabric is a much thicker, much more dense cotton than the actual quilting cotton. And because this one had a border on it, I decided to run the length of that border. So this was 36 inches because I had one yard of it, 36 inches times two, which is 72 inches total. 
This skirt really worked out nicely gathered in there because this fabric itself is just very, it's very substantive, you all. It's got a lot of body. It is a much thicker fabric, and so it does work really nicely. But I did want to bring up that fabric will make a difference in how the actual end result will be, but either way, it's gonna be cute. So now I'm just trying to figure out where I'm going to place my front and back pattern pieces. So I'm gonna fold this now in half. And I've decided that I actually want my back piece to be on this reddish color here. So that's where I'm going to pin this one. And then I'm going to pin my front bodice piece down on the more gold or mustardy color. Now before we cut, keep in mind that we have to add our quarter inch seam allowances. So I'm just gonna measure that right now and I'm gonna cut across. So there's no chance of forgetting it here. So I'm gonna cut it out on both the front and the back pieces and then I'm just going to continue cutting out the rest of them. So now I'm just gonna open up my front and my back pieces here because the next step is actually going to be dealing with our ruffled piece. So here I'm opening them up for reference. Now I'm gonna grab both of my ruffled pieces and I'm gonna pin them together at the side. So first line them up and then we're going to pin together our two pieces. So we're going to pin along the sides here, matching up the design, that border design at the bottom as best as we can. And then we're going to sew down the seam on both sides actually. So we're going to make sure that we backstitch at the beginning and at the end, and then we're gonna finish these seams and press them. Let's take it to our sewing machine. So now we need to hem this. I'm going to take the selvage edge here and I'm going to press it up and then I'm just going to sew that around. So let's go to the sewing machine. Okay, so this is what it looks like when it's all pressed and sewn together. Now we need to add in our basting stitches all the way around. Now I'm going to do two different rows of basting stitches, one set for the front and one, step, one set for the back. I'm going to back stitch at the one end and then I'm going to leave the other open. Now that both of my rows of basting stitches are in, I'm going to find the bottom one where the bobbin was because those pull much easier. I'm going to grab those and I'm going to start gathering my fabric so that it is the width of my bodice piece. And when that is actually the length of my bodice piece, I'm going to tie it into knots at the end so that way my gathers don't slip off the thread and we're gonna secure it that way. And then I'm going to flip it over and do the other side. Now that I've got all of my gathers into the length that I need it to be, I'm going to adjust all of my gathers to even them out a little more. Now this Ankara fabric is pretty stiff and thick and so it's going to take a little more effort for me just to kind of shift these little suckers around, but they're gonna get there. And now we have our skirt. We're going to put that aside and we're going to go ahead and attach our bodice. So sew up the bodice, attach your bindings, all of that good stuff, and then we'll attach the skirt. Okay, and so here's our completed bodice. I am going to take my skirt, match it up, and then I'm going to flip it around after I choose which side I think looks better. <laughs> I think I'm gonna settle in on the other. <laughs> and then I'm going to go ahead and flip my skirt open so that I can pull my bodice through the middle and pin it all the way around. After it's all pinned, we're going to take this to the sewing machine and sew it. After I attached the skirt to the bodice, I did serge that seam and then I pressed it up so that way it would all lay nice and flat. 
and you can see here how beautiful it looks. Now we need to attach a pocket, and I'm actually going to attach a pocket to the bodice. So I decided that this bodice needed a little heart pocket, and if you'd like to make a heart pocket for yourself, you can click on the link above and it'll take you to that tutorial. I'll also put it in the info box down below. As a side note, these pockets really are so much easier to attach when your dress isn't complete. So try to do this much earlier in the process before your skirt is even on this sucker. Don't forget about your label and your dress is now done. And there you have it. With one cut to the front and to the back of each of our pattern pieces, we ended up with two very different looking dresses. And really the possibilities are endless. Why not layer an additional little ruffle here, add a little lace ruffle, or why not add a little bit of a ruffle sleeve right onto the top here so that way it drapes over a shoulder. Tons of options. As a matter of fact, make sure that you check out Jen's video right over here because she's gonna show you how to make a really easy lined pocket that has a pop of color like that. So definitely take a look at her video for additional pocket options and you all until next time. I sincerely hope that you find joy and have a wonderful day.